During the 20-year military campaign in Afghanistan, of course, hundreds of British troops lost their lives, with thousands more injured during the conflict. And seeing the Taliban take control, you can't blame their loved ones or those that were injured, wondering if that sacrifice was in vain. Well, joining us now is former Marine Ben McMean, who lost an arm and a leg in Afghanistan, age 20. And we're also joined by Christine Harrison, whose son, Corporal Darren Bonner, was tragically killed out there in 2007. Good morning to you both. Thanks for coming in. Wait. Christine, you know, uh, I'm so sorry. I know this is difficult for you to talk about, isn't it? But I know that you feel it's important to talk about it because you want to, to reach out to other people who are in a similar situation yeah, absolutely. Well. Absolutely. It's important um, that I speak out because there's families that wouldn't be able to. Yeah, and, it, you know, it, it must sort of bring it all back for you. I know you've, you know, you've gone through all of this uh, when it happened at the time, processed it, and I guess one of those things that kept you going was the fact that the difference he had made. Absolutely. He was very, very proud of what he'd done. Um, it was Darren's second tour of Afghanistan. And when he came home the first time, he was so excited about how they were making such a difference. And... Um, In what way? What's well, the, he was saying that they're pushing the Taliban back and um, the villages that he was he was in were actually coming back to normal again. Oh. You know, they, the, he said, Mum, the kids are going to school, the, the mums and dads are working and, and doing all the things that they normally do. Um, and he, he couldn't... He was so proud, so, mm -hmm. so proud. And, and rightly right. so. Yeah. And rightly so. When you hear Dominic Raab, the Foreign Secretary, say that, that we have achieved things, even though the Taliban are now back in control, what does that make you feel? Well, from what I see, um, I can see all I can see is that everything that Darren and, and all his colleagues and, and the fallen, all the other fallen soldiers, people who have been injured, not necessarily physically, but mentally. That all that, is that all for nothing? Is that all for nothing? Because to me, it looks like we've gone back to square one. You know, you can say, they can talk about how much um, they've achieved. Yes, that they have, but it's gone. It's not there anymore. You know, they've, they've, they've lost what they had. And, and if I think like that, as a mum of a fallen soldier, so does the rest of Britain, you know, mm. and the amount of people that have spoken to me over texts and such and sort of, you must be awful for you now, Chris, because everything Darren did is, was in vain. And they, they wouldn't do that if, if they, they all didn't feel the same as I do. And I just feel that I've got to speak up for the other families as well. I mean, when you, when you lose somebody, as such as, as I have myself, um, it's like a, a stone being put in, thrown into a, a, a river and then the ripples just go out. Mm. So you, you're not talking about mum, just mums and dads, brothers, sisters, aunties, uncles, grandparents. It you has know, a huge wider consequence. Absolutely. Of and, it, it. and I mean, you know, I've had people in my family that have had quite dire, they've, they've been dire effects, you know, they, they have been, had illnesses mm. due to Darren. Um, the loss because of, of what's happened. Yeah. Well, Ben, let's let's bring you in because you know you you survived the attack that that obviously injured you. You you came back and were lucky from that point of view. But I know it had a, a huge impact on your life. How do you feel about the situation at the moment? All that you went for, all that you fought for, right there on the front line, and and what it is now looking like will happen. Yeah, you know, I mean, I've been injured 14 years now. You know. You, the government always make calls and they've, in my life, they've never really filtered down to my level and affected me. So I've always just been able to just get on with things. Um, this was the first time where they've done something and I felt the impact of it as soon as I, I saw what was going on. And I just remember thinking like, wow, did the government really not care about people? They really don't care, you know, and I'm thinking back to like, you know, the NHS and we clapped them all for months and they're heroes. And then we just gave them 1% pay rise, not wanting to feed kids. And then our troops just being pulled out like that. Um, which affects us, obviously, and it affects them. And, you know, I've been injured 14 years. I've been trying to stay positive and always trying to take the good out of the bad kind of thing. And I've always had in the back of my mind, like, this happened for a reason, because we did this mm. and we were trying to do that. And all of that's gone. And then, you know, you've got a government talking 
during the pandemic about being patriotic and, you know, Union Jack flags in the background on your Zoom and like, this is what, you know I mean? Look at that, that's, that's what being patriotic looks like. If, you know, you haven't got to go to, the, to war, join the force or anything like that, you can just be a kid and teach kids to pick up litter off the ground and do their bit kind of thing and be proud of your country. And, you know, my bit of being patriotic and proud of where I was born, this is where I'm from, um, was going to war, I mean, war's not just going there killing people or whatever, but you're also trying to help people out. Mm. Build schools. Um, Would you yeah, help with education, say, didn't you? You can you? build girls. schools, you yeah. can send, send young girls to be educated or whatever, which is, which is great. And I could then say, oh, well, at least if some kids were educated, that's fine. But, but in today's time now, with what's happened, just, just walking away, those same girls, can they use their education? No, they've got to burn their certificates in case they get caught out that they've been educated and they're so dead. You're now a proud dad. Yes. You wanted to tell your children when they got old enough to sort of perhaps look at your injuries and wonder, you wanted to tell them a story. T tell us what you wanted to say and what you feel you can say now. I mean, I've never really planned, like, what I would say. My, my son notices that I've got one arm. Sometimes he would pass it me or my, pass me on my leg for me or whatever, just to go to the park kind of thing. So he doesn't... Like, I've never let my injuries hold him back, if you know what I mean. So he's never thought, oh, I can't do this because Daddy's like this. But when he gets older, maybe you might notice that I can't just jump into the sea and just run down the road with him and teach him how to ride a bike kind of thing. And that hurts, but I also accept it because I feel like, oh, I went to Afghanistan and I did my bit. And I've always said, like, I'd rather be injured like this rather than being drunk and get hit by a bus type of thing. Um, but I've been waiting for the war to end where, like, we won it or, you know, now the world's a better place kind of thing. And obviously that's not um, going to be the case. So I'm quite a positive person. And I'm not being, like, naive in the sense of always just trying to be deluded and say everything's cool when it's not. But I really genuinely can't... Um, see any good what's going on right now and I can't take anything positive from it. Mm. And for the first time in my life, or well, since my injury, 14 years, I just feel like really flat. Because when I was injured, mm. I lost my mojo a bit anyway. And I tried to get as much of it back as I could. And, so this is not a and now it's just another Well, look, you should bit. have your mojo. We're all proud mm. of you. We're so proud of you. Your children will be and we're proud of your son. Thank you both as for well, coming on Darren to speak too. to us. And also, you know, thank you for the price that you've both yes. paid because we can yes. tell, obviously, by talking to you how much it means to you. So we're very grateful. Thanks very much.